Okay, we have a fresh scene here and I'm immediately going to press Shift A and from the mesh menu, I'm gonna click on plane. I'm going to come over to the right hand side of the screen in the transform menu. I'm going to make my plane to something that's a little bit like a terrain. So it's gonna be 64 meters by 64 meters. And note that when I do this, uh, it's actually uh, Blender's changed the scale of my plane to 32, 32 and one. But we'll come back to that in a moment. Um, now from here, I'm gonna drag up on my timeline and go over to the little clock icon and change my timeline into a geometry node editor. And I'm gonna click new, and then I'm gonna pin my graph so that when I click away from the, the terrain, I don't lose the graph. Um, now, I wanna start scattering things on my terrain. And to do this, I uh, uh, the first thing we're gonna do is press Shift A, and we're going to go to points. Now, I need to be, uh, I need to have the graph, I need to be in the graph, do a Shift A. Uh, and then we go to points, and distribute points on faces. Uh, and we get a node, and we wanna drop the node on that cable right there. Uh, and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, and I'm gonna drag this node right over there. Uh, now you can see, immediately see, we can't see the terrain anymore. So the way to bring our terrain back is do another Shift A, and we're gonna to go to Geometry, and we're gonna select the Join Geometry node, and right over here, I'm just gonna drop it on that cable right there. And then I'm gonna drop this down a bit. And I'm gonna drag from the group input over here. And now we can see both the points on on our terrain and the terrain itself. Now I can drag on the density there. So I can increase my density and I can change the seed. And from here, we wanna now attach some geometry to our points. So we'll do a shift A and we'll go to instances and instance on points. And we will drop this, say, around about there. Uh, and now we wanna, we've already got a cube in the scene. So let's click on the cube and we'll press G and drag our cube over to the side so we can see it. And then from the outliner, I'm gonna drag my cube onto my graph like so, and maybe we'll pop it over here. And then we're gonna take the geometry and we're gonna plug it into the instance right there. And immediately you can see it's uh, the, the terrain has now been populated with cubes, but they've been scaled. And so if I click on my plane, we can see this is where this issue of the transforms not being applied are an issue. So we'll just, with a the, with the plane selected, I'm gonna press Control A and immediately I can apply all transforms. Uh, so my cubes are now not scaled incorrectly. Uh, so from here, I can change the density. So if we drop our density down to somewhere that's more reasonable, so we can see some cubes, but they are still overlapping a little. Now, if I go to my distribute points on faces node and there's a random rollout, if I click on that, I can go to pass on disk and I can set a minimum distance which the cube is two meters, right? So if we set it to two, it sort of spaces them out more, but they're still overlapping a little bit. So if we, if we wanted to just not have them overlap at all, we could just increase that number a little bit and we can still change our seed and the density factor there. Uh, now, our cube is a proxy for a rock. So it might be reasonable to expect that our rock might be rotated. So if we do a shift A whilst in the graph and we go to utilities and we're gonna pick uh, random value uh, and we're going to drop our random value down here let me just make that visible uh, and we're just simply going to take the the random value which at the moment is a float and we can plug that into scale and immediately we get uh, some random scale on our cube proxy for a rock uh, now I'm gonna I'm simply just going to do a shift D on that and produce another random value and we're going to change this to a, a vector and we're gonna plug this into rotation. Now we've got random rotation on our rocks. Uh, now I'm gonna select that nice little group of nodes and I'm gonna do a, a control C, control V to duplicate them. And I'm gonna move these below that. And I'm going to plug it in, in in exactly the same way as the previous set of objects. 
so this is now essentially a, a duplicate of that cube. Now what we could do at this point is we could change the seed and now we can see there's a, there's a second set of cubes. But let's change this to a different object. So if we click in the, the 3D viewport and do a Shift A and go to Mesh and we're going to add in a cone. I'm going to move my cone, I'm going to press G and move my cone over to the side. And then I'm going to come over to the outliner again. I'm going to drag my cone onto the graph. I'm going to delete this duplicate of that cube. And I'm going to plug it in exactly the same way into instance over here. Now we can immediately see the cone is starting to appear, but it's uh, sitting in the terrain and it's, it's also rotated. So let's deal with the rotation. I'm just going to effectively disable the rotation by putting a bunch of zeros into the max value there so it's not rotated, but it's still sitting in the terrain. So if you come over and click on, make sure we've got the, uh, we've clicked on our on our cone, you can go up into the right hand top corner and click on options, effect origin only. And then with the, if I come over and just get the, the transform gizmo to appear, I can move the transform gizmo, which is, which is the origin now. Uh, to below the tree so that the tree or our cone is now just above the surface or maybe on it, however you want it. And uh, at this point with that sl selected, I can press tab to go into uh, edit mode and I could press um, say S and Z to scale my tree in, in the Z axis and I can make my trees a bit taller like that and then press tab to come out. And there we are, we have a, a the beginnings of a landscape, which is uh, the tip of the iceberg for geometry nodes, but it's a nice little basic introduction.